Zach with Wingard Wearables. You're one of 12 special people who's going to watch this video all the way to the end. In today's video, deep thoughts about dick pics. We're going to be covering it all. Everything you could think of in a dick pic product overview. And stick around to the end because we're going to tell you how you can win a Stingray Tomahawk. That's right. There's a Stingray giveaway, folks. You're going to want to hear it. Let's get to it. So this is first a comparison with our quills and the dick pics. So our quills are made from hand forged uh, 303 stainless steel. Um, so that is a softer steel than the dick pics. Um, however, uh, the tips are uh, blunter. And so with more material up at the tip, that supports the strength of the design. Uh, very strong tips on the quills. Um, but the pyramidal tip, although it's pointed enough to concentrate uh, your force uh, for, you know, utility or, you know, self-defense blows, that sort of thing, um, it's still blunt enough that you do not require a carry system. Uh, so a lot of folks carry the quills like in this orientation in the bottom of the pocket. Um, you can even carry this tucked behind your ear. Uh, one of the benefits of the quill as a design is it does not really look like a tool or weapon. Um, so hung behind the ear, it really does look like hand-forged jewelry. Um, however, the dick pics, especially when they're in their carry systems, um, they are going to be identified as certainly a tool and potentially as a weapon. And they have to be in carry systems because uh, the tips are a lot finer and pointier and sharper. Um, so the carry systems are there to you know, prevent self-injury. Dick picks are made very similarly to a small batch production fixed blade knife. Uh, so it starts with a water jet cutting process and the longer your cutting perimeter is and the thicker your material, uh, the more expensive the water jet pro process becomes. And due to the L shape of the dick pick, you can't really nest as many of these parts per a plate uh, as you can with, say, conventional fixed blade designs. Uh, so just the water jet cutting process does wind up being more expensive than typical uh, knife jobs. Uh, after it's water jet cut, uh, this is freehand ground. Um, we then have it stamped with our logo, heat treated, uh, and then there's a final grind uh, on the pry bar edge and the spike tip. Uh, then we make a taco style sheath um, you know, that's thermoformed, that's drilled, sawed. Uh, I dremel off the rough saw marks and then I hand file around the corners so that when this is up against your skin, it does not leave like a cut or abrasion, sort of like a uh, paper cut. Um, so we really want this to be wearable and comfortable. Um, now, dick picks do cost a lot less than small bash production fixed blade knives. And that's because uh, two steps are eliminated. Uh, there are no handle scales required on the dick picks. They are uh, thick cross-section spikes um, with chamfered edges. So there isn't any, it's not like comes to a sharp rectangular or square stocked edge. You can grip this with force without any abrasion on your skin, that sort of thing. Uh, so there's no grip wrap, no grip scales required. Uh, and it is also a spike, so there's not an edge uh, to be ground and hand sharpened. Uh, so that results in a lower cost than your typical small batch production uh, fixed blades. Now, on to materials. Uh, dick picks are spikes. Spikes are not knives. That means a great knife steel does not necessarily make for a great spike steel. In my opinion, uh, a spike needs high toughness against prying tasks. Um, it also needs enough strength and hardness for that spike tip um, to hold up on piercing and scribing type tasks. Um, but hardness is relative. In general, the harder your steel is, uh, the lower its toughness. So ideally, a spike should be uh, very, very tough. It should also be corrosion resistant. Uh, you're going to use this to scrape, probe, and pick at materials with a wide range of environments that include lots of ice and moisture or in salt water or exposure to different chemical residues. Uh, so corrosion resistance, I, I believe that's very important for a spike. Now, there aren't any edges on a spike. There's only a pointed tip. 
Uh, for spikes, there's no need for edge retention, wear resistance, or high hardness uh, like you want on a typical cutting edge of a knife. And that's where uh, you start to see a divergence between what makes a good knife steel and what makes a good spike steel. Uh, so for the full-size dick pick, uh, this is made from quarter-inch thick 420 stainless steel. Uh, this steel is common in kitchen knives because it has high corrosion resistance and very high toughness. The majority of kitchen knives are going to be left soaking in dishwater, sometimes for days. And often uh, when you're using a kitchen knife, you'll frequently strike bone when cutting meat. So you don't want the edge to chip on bone or roll. Um, so as a knife steel 420, uh, not great for edge retention, wear resistance, or high hardness, but... Uh, it is very tough, and for a spike, especially a full-size dick pick, um, it's perfect. It's very tough material, and the dick pick is long enough that you're actually going to get quite a bit of uh, leverage, subject a lot of uh, stout leverage and force to this, so you really don't want that tool to break. Uh, now, 420 stainless steel is actually very expensive for us because it is very rarely made at a quarter-inch thick. Um, so all those like 420 stainless steel kitchen knives you see, that's extremely thin stock. That type of blade stock, uh, you know, material stock of plate is very common. But actually the quarter inch uh, 420 stainless steel winds up costing two to three times as much as other knife steels. So we've had a hard time sourcing it. Now, the micro dick pick is made from 3 16 inch thick AEB-L uh, stainless steel. We want a higher hardness than 420 because we have a finer tip here and we wanted this to be used for scribing on metals and other hard materials. Um, also the micro dick pick small size means you can't really subject it to extremely high leverage forces. It's just so small. Um, but we, you know, even though AEB-L maybe, you know, at that hardness is a little bit less tough than 420, it's still AEB-L is a very tough steel. Now, corrosion resistance. These two are my personal uh, dick pick and micro dick pick and carry systems. So these two have been taken, tucked in my swimming trunks, in the surf, in the salt water, exposed for hours over days, and they held up great. Very little surface corrosion occurred. Uh, when it did, what little did was easily removed by taking grains of sand and fresh water and just rubbing. Um, and then after you get out of the salt water, you know, the Kydex sheaths, you uh, flush that with uh, fresh water, blow it out to dry, and you just let it air dry overnight. Um, I also tried a little dab of oil on the surface, rubbed down, and that really eliminated what little rust did occur. So, you know, 420 stainless steel and AEBL, very impressed with how it did in that saltwater corrosion environment. Because it's not just the salt water, you got bits of sand getting the sheath and a rubbing on the surface of the spike in the sheath. Very corrosive environment, and it did fantastic. All right, now uses for the dick pick. You can use it like an ice pick. You can also use it like an awl, right? So you grip it like that, you do a twisting hand drilling type motion. Um, and that square cross section does help you on removing more material more easily than just a strictly rounded uh, spike. Um, you can also use this as a skewer um, or a pricker. So think you're manipulating objects like food into your mouth or other objects you want to poke and prod, but you don't want to touch with your fingers. So I've uh, used micro dick pick here to pick up hot shell casings uh, that have been injected to guns that are being tested just to inspect the shell casing for evidence of malfunctions. Um, I've been on the beach and I've poked jellyfish using uh, my full-size dick pick that washed up just to look at them because you don't want to touch a jellyfish with your bare fingers because that's kind of gross and you might get stung. Um, you can also use uh, the dick pick for starting holes. Um, so think you got drywall and you got a set of screw or you know a piece of wood. Um, you can just set this against the surface of the material and then you know percussively slap uh, the top of this and that'll indent the material with the spike tip. All right, and once that begins, you can start setting a nail or a screw in that indentation. Um, now, twisting motions. Um, you can slide the spike in 
and then into a, an object and twist. So for instance, if you want to break a zip tie, it works for that. Or if you want to tighten an eye bolt, so you've set the little hole that starts the eye bolt, you set it down and you can actually twist the eye bolt with the dick pick and drill it into wood. Um, prying. So, um, you know, you can use the pry grip like this, you know, and pull up. So you got that pry bar edge up against the ground. Um, and you can lever open some types of floorboards, big pieces of tile. You can pry open paint cans. Um, and you can even pry with the spike tip. Um, so, uh, for instance, this, my personal uh, dick pick here got shoved up inside a magazine well of an AR-15 type uh, rifle that was shooting uh, a funky hot Wildcat cartridge and the bolt was stuck. And the person that was running the gun had a little Allen wrench, you know, the L-shaped guys, and it just didn't have enough leverage. So I lent him this and he was able to stick that up in the magazine well and it was a stout enough tool that he was able to exert with a lot of force and keep the gun running for the test event. Um, now it did result in a bent tip um, but 420 stainless steel, very tough. You know, I had it straightened out in a vise in seconds, and I used a hand file to sharpen back up the tip. So that's one of the benefits of going with that 420 stainless steel. The tip bent, it didn't break, and it was uh, easily corrected. Very tough steel. Now, um, percussion. You can use this to tamp down a paint can using this hammer face here. Or even better, you can grip it like this and do hammer fist strikes and use that instead of the meat of your hand to take the percussive impact. And both sizes of uh, dick pick work quite well for that. Um, and scribing. So you can grip this uh, kind of like a pencil and exert force to scribe into different materials. The uh, micro dick pick will scribe into harder materials better, uh, like metals. Although the dick pick full size will certainly scribe like aluminum. If you're starting to scribe like uh, steels and such, um, you know, this will definitely work better for that. Um, scraping. So you see the curved surface here. Uh, these have corners, they're chamfered corners, but you can use that to scrape materials. Think you're scraping food residues from the inside of a stainless steel uh, pot or pan or other uh, surfaces, this definitely does work well as a scraper. Uh, wood batoning. Now, you got a piece of wood, bushcraft. Uh, you can use the hammer face to baton the chisel tip into a piece of wood and then pry. But I want you to be really careful and thoughtful on what pieces of wood you do that with. Um, you know, especially if you pound it in, uh, batoning on the top here to get the point in and then try to pry it. Um, some pieces of wood, uh, this would be like pounding a really thick nail into the wood, and you may not have enough leverage uh, to extract it. So you do run a risk there if you're using a uh, dick pick or micro dick pick to pound into wood and pry off pieces. So be careful there. Uh, digging, really digging you can only do effectively, efficiently with the full-size uh, dick pick, but it does work. Um, so basically you're, you're slamming this into the ground like a pick and using the width of the dick pick to sort of grub and tear into the soil. And it actually works pretty darn good. You can also use it like an ice pick mode to break up soil um, before you dig further. Uh, micro dick pick I, I think is just a little too small and narrow for digging tasks. Um, you can also pry off tabs uh, using the, the pry bar or even the tip. Um, depending on the strength of the tab, and then pierce vent holes into uh, containers of plastic or metal containers, even fairly thick mild steel containers um, because of the high hardness and concentrated uh, tip. And then you can pour out the contents of the fluids that are in the containers rather well because you vented the container. Um, you know, you can obviously, uh, you can remove staples of various, even large sizes with these um, and you can use these as marlin spikes, although I would recommend, um, if you're into marlin spikes, uh, to consider blunting the tip because very sharp tip spikes uh, can tend to damage different types of rope. Um, and you can use uh, 
this to hone a knife's edge. It's not going to work for every knife, and clearly there's a lot better tools out there for honing a knife. They're specifically made. Uh, but in the old phrase, iron sharpens iron, uh, there are some knife steels that can, the edge can be touched up using a spike basically as a steel rod to run the blade on uh, to, you know, sort of on the fly field uh, expedient method to sharpen a knife edge. It won't work for every knife. Uh, I found it effective on like Swiss Army type knives. Now, speaking of knives, spikes can be used as rudimentary tearing tools, especially when the spike tip is finer in point. The sharper the tip, the better. Um, knives are always going to be the superior tool to, versus a spike for severing materials. However, there are some locations where knife carry is prohibited. So amazingly, in Philadelphia, 45 minutes from my house, um, you have knife laws in Philly that are more restrictive than Great Britain. It's more similar in strictness to New Zealand, where you just can't carry any cutting instrument unless it's for your job and you're at your job or you're going to and from your job. That's crazy restrictive, but that is the law in Philly. Um, so when you can't carry a blade, well, you can carry a spike. It does has no edge and you can use it for a rudimentary tearing type tool. It will not it's not a cutting instrument. It cannot really be used to slice through some materials, but it can be used to tear through thin materials similar to an animal's talon. Um, so because the dick pick or micro dick pick is virtually all handle, you can take grips where virtually the entire dick pick is supported very firmly. And you can get a great deal of pressure on that point and very controllably score through thin materials. And even if you don't fully tear through those materials, it can create little micro tear perforations so that you can then follow up to separate the material with your hand. Um, and there are other times where you have a knife, but you're, you have to separate thin materials that are in close proximity to surfaces that will risk damaging your knife's edge. So over the summer, we had a big water spill in our house. It was terrible. We had to remove the vinyl flooring and underneath was this underlayment of a fabric type material that was soaked with water and had to be removed. Now the underlayment was basically recycled lint and fibers compressed into this eighth inch thick uh, you know, layer that was a, glued to a thin polymer film. And no knife edge could really slice through that material anyway. If you imagine taking a sharp knife and trying to sla slash or slice through compressed balls of lint, it really doesn't work. It always tears through ugly, even with a blade. And it's on the concrete pad. Um, so what I found was by doing multiple blade passes, my edge kept contacting the hard concrete floor. It really wasn't good for the knife. It was, it was awful. But with the dick pick, there was no problem. I used uh, the spike and I pre-scored uh, this underlayment. And I didn't care that the dick pick's tip was skipping off of the concrete underneath. Uh, you know, it actually helped me create, due to the high pressure that I was able to exert on it, I could... Uh, create those micro tears in a fairly clean line and then separate it by hand. Um, so spikes can be used as cutting tools, more like rudimentary tearing tools. Think more like a talon, what you could use for a talon in your hand, but they do work. But the biggest takeaway here, it's not knife versus spike. It's knife with spike. Any spike that's well-designed will pair perfectly with your folding knife in your everyday carry. Your knife can handle whittling, slicing, spreading type tasks, and your spike can handle all these abusive prying, piercing, scraping tasks that can ruin your folding knife. And, you know, it's not just the dick pick and micro dick pick that are out there. You got quills of different sizes as well. So these are real minimalist spikes that you can add to your EDC. But if you want a really fine-tipped, hard-tipped spikes, the dick picks and the micro dick picks are definitely the way to go. Dick picks for self-defense. These are point-driven tools. They are not knives with an edge for slashing and propagating tears. Uh, but they are very effective. Spikes are inherently effective at getting through fabric, flesh, and even some bone. Uh, now, there are three different grips you can take for self-defense using the dick pick. 
Now notice the L shape of the dick pick. This pry bar projection here can act as a gripping surface. So you can wrap your three fingers around this portion, wrap your index finger on top, and you have punch dagger grip. So this is projecting very far between your knuckles, but it is not as well supported. So if you're um, you know, using this against an animal to protect yourself, that's one thing. But using it against an opponent who's attacking you, uh, they could get that point offline, deflect it with their hand when they throw up hands to protect themselves or deflect your blow. Uh, and that's because you're only squeezing the dick pick between your knuckles and inside your fingers. Now, the other grip that's far more strongly supported is what we call the haymaker grip. So with this, the dick pick point is turned 90 degrees and then you wrap your thumb on top of it. That's quite strongly supported. You still get quite a projected spike length. And this is used instead of for straight punches, it's more like chin jab motions, haymaker, or uh, think you're getting you know, a rear naked choke on you, someone behind you. Quite a bit of reach to swing down and then reach into the pelvic girdle area. So that is a pretty effective grip, pretty strong. But the strongest grip you can get is the ice pick grip. So that's where all four fingers are wrapped and then the thumb is capped over the top. So you got the pry bar projecting forward and then the spike projecting downward. There are two surfaces that you could wound an opponent with. Uh, this pry bar surface is going to do more shallow type gouges so, you know, think a rake across the forehead, that would be very dramatic results, but that's not terribly incapacitating. Uh, the spike uh, projected length is the least, especially when you're talking about, you know, micro dick pick. Um, but, you know, size does matter in some ex to some extent, and the full-size dick pick is going to get you maximum uh, spike length in all respects. Uh, but reverse grip, ice pick grip, that's going to be your most strongly supported grip against an agile uh, opponent. Okay, so these are the carry systems that come with uh, your dick picks. So it's a simple Kydex fold-over taco-style sheath uh, with brass eyelets and a uh, pocket hook-style feature here. You see that it's on both of them so that it can uh, better assist catching on the pocket when you draw it. Um, now, they come with these very strong alligator clamps. There's two of them. Um, you open that up and clip that to your clothing, whether it's inside your pocket or your waistband. Um, and these are tethered with eighth inch shot cord. Uh, so that retains the sheath, whether you're wearing it in your pocket or you're wearing it tucked into your waistline uh, horizontally, carried like, like so uh, across your, uh, above your groin, across your waistline. So uh, those work very well. Now, the brass eyelets are spaced apart from each other so that you can remove, if you choose, uh, this uh, shot cord tether clamp and replace it with an aftermarket carry clip. So, for instance, if we look at this full-size dick pick um, on my personal one, I've kept this rear uh, clamp tether and I replaced this top one with a discrete carry concepts uh, clip. It's very strong, clamps into my waistband very well, and I put a single screw so that it can pivot. So I can wear this uh, clipped across my belt horizontally above my groin and draw it very quickly. Um, I can also clip this uh, on the outside of my pocket, right, and draw it quickly as well. And you can orient uh, the dick pick pry bar either way, depending on you know, which side of your pants that you're carrying it in your pocket. Uh, but I do like uh, that pivot on the, uh, the full-size dick pick. Now for the micro dick pick, what I did was um, I replaced that top tether with two screws and an aftermarket Ulti clip. So Ulti clip's another popular brand. It takes some breaking into uh, to get this working, but really clips in there firm for a secure pocket hook carry. Uh, now, if you are going to carry only in your pocket, you're not interested in inside the waistband horizontal carry, um, then yeah, definitely look into these, uh, you know, Ulti clip or discrete carry concepts uh, clips. I did find the discrete carry concepts clips 
uh, had less rust corrosion issue in the saltwater surf, but really, you know, exposing both of these uh, clips in the ocean surf for that long, I, I think that's probably not what they're really made for. Um, and this barely had, it was like tiny bits of rust here on the uh, edges where it uh, moved and you can dab oil to keep that going. So really the takeaway here is that spikes are kind of like super fingers. Like we use our fingers to press into things, to poke things. We use the fingernails to scratch, scrape, and pry things. We use fingers together to tear things apart. We use our knuckles to percussively bash things. But the list of daily tasks you can tackle with just your bare fingers uh, is limited by the strength of your fingers. Like your fingernails can only pry so much until they're incapable of prying or you injure yourself, that sort of thing. Uh, so if you have a spike that's well designed, like our dick picks or our quills, uh, they're you know at projecting at least as long as your finger. They're thinner, stronger, made of steel. Uh, they can tackle a great many things that you can't do with your fingers. They're incredible. And yet, there are people who will see you doing a task with a spike or that you carry a spike, and they'll say, eh, just use your fingers. And I have a low opinion for these people because they're, they're either two things. Either they're thoughtless people and they aren't thinking through how inconsistent their logic is, that they don't actually use their fingers for everything that they can use their fingers for, right? Or they're the grossest, nastiest people alive. Like, think about this. You got a deli sandwich you're making. You got the bread open, the meat on it, and you're going to put mayonnaise on the bread, right? Do you stick your fingers into the mayo jar, scoop it up, and then spread it on the bread? I mean, you could. You could use your fingers for it. That's really gross and nasty. Uh, I use a butter knife, right? Or if you defecate into the toilet afterwards, do you take your bare hand and wipe yourself? No cloth or anything? You could. That's super gross and nasty. Don't do that. Use toilet paper or, you know, if there's a toilet paper shortage, isn't there like a bidet contraption somebody came out with? I don't know. But point is, if you use your fingers for every single task that could possibly be used for, it's super gross and nasty. Uh, use tools and get a spike. Get a bunch of spikes. Spikes of all sizes. We got it. And speaking of which, you stuck around to the end of this video. You're one of 12 special people that got to the end. And here we go. If you buy any dick pic of any size, quill of any size, tomahawks, anything on our site, thumper wear clubs that are live weapons, then you get entered into a Stingray giveaway contest. We are giving away five Stingray tomahawks. All you got to do is place your order before Christmas Day and you get entered in. And uh, yeah, your chances are very good. These are high quality items. We're finishing up you know, small batches of stingrays through the month. We are out of back ripper tomahawks. We are going to get more made. Um, but yeah, uh, great news for you guys. Chance to win a stingray tomahawk. Share this video with a friend so that 13 people will have watched it. And remember to be edgy.